Story 1 It was supposed to be a fun night for the tourists and locals in Durban, a coastal city in South Africa known for its lively culture and entertainment. A circus had set up its tents near the beach, offering a variety of acts and attractions. One of them was Zhao Zhihao, a lion tamer who had traveled from China with his majestic beast. Zhihao had been working with the lion for years, and they had developed a bond of trust and respect. He knew how to calm the animal, command it, and thrill the audience with their daring feats. He had performed in many places before, but this was his first time in Durban. He was excited to show his skills and impress the crowd. The night of the second show, he entered the ring with his lion, wearing a red jacket and a black hat. He waved to the cheering spectators who were eager to see him and his partner. He smiled confidently, holding a whip and a chair in his hands. He signaled to the lion, who roared loudly and followed him to the center of the ring. Zhi Hao began his routine, making the lion jump through hoops, sit on a pedestal, and roll over on command. He praised the animal with his voice and his touch, rewarding it with pieces of meat. The lion seemed to enjoy the attention and the treats, obeying Zhi Hao's every command. The crowd was amazed by their performance, clapping and cheering along. They also took out their phones and cameras, snapping photos and videos of the spectacle. They wanted to capture every moment of the show, unaware of the danger they were creating. Suddenly, the lion's eyes, which were once bright and full of life, showed fear and discomfort because of the flashing lights. Each burst of light hurt its eyes, making its pupils contract and dilate quickly. The lion's mane looked majestic, but it was agitated, and its strong muscles were ready to attack whatever was bothering it. The low growls became loud roars that echoed through the enclosure, creating a scary atmosphere. The lion's sharp teeth were now visible in a menacing snarl. It seemed confused and irritated. Its tail, which used to be held high, now twitched nervously, showing how distressed it was. With each passing moment, the lion became more agitated, trying desperately to find out what was causing its distress. Zhi Hao, the person taking care of the lion, approached it carefully, knowing that the lion was unpredictable. He felt his heart pounding as he tried to figure out how to calm the wild animal. He whispered softly, his voice quavering, and held out a shaky hand to the lion. Although the lion knew Zhi Hao well, it couldn't tell if he was a friend or a threat in its distressed state. Zhi Hao's comforting touch, which used to make the lion feel safe, now made it recoil in anger. In response, the lion let out a fierce roar that seemed to make the ground shake. As the lion's eyes glinted with a murderous intensity, it launched itself at Zhi Hao with terrifying speed and force. In a split second, the caretaker found himself knocked to the ground. The lion's powerful jaws clamped onto his arm with bone-crushing force, instantly drawing a gush of blood mixing with the dirt on the ground. Zhi Hao's agonized screams echoed through the enclosure as the lion's teeth tore through his flesh, leaving behind a gruesome trail of torn muscle and shredded skin. The pain was unbearable, searing through his body. The smell of blood filled the air further fueling the lion's ferocity as it seemed intent on ravaging its helpless victim. As the beast reared back, Zhi Hao's once unblemished face now bore the deep marks of the lion's razor-sharp claws. The skin was torn apart, revealing raw, oozing wounds that marred his features. The sight alone would have been enough to cause nightmares. Every attempt to fight back seemed futile as Yi Hao's kicks and punches barely dented the lion's hulking form. The creature was a relentless predator, driven by both anger and discomfort. Its grip on Yi Hao tightened, its claws digging deeper into his flesh with each passing second. Yi Hao did the only thing he could do. He covered his head and neck with his hands and arms, hoping to protect them from the fatal swipes. He prayed that someone would help him and save him from this predicament. The crowd was stunned by what they saw, frozen in shock and fear. They watched as Zhi Hao was mauled by the lion, unable to move or react. They heard his cries of pain and terror echoing in their ears. Some dropped their phones and cameras, realizing they had caused this tragedy. 
They felt guilty and ashamed for their actions, wishing they could undo them. They wondered if they could have prevented this horror if they had just not used their devices. Others kept their phones and cameras on, recording the gruesome scene as if it were a movie. They felt fascinated and thrilled by the violence, wanting to see more of it. They wondered if they could make money or fame from this footage. The security and circus crew rushed to the ring, armed with tranquilizer guns and poles. They tried to stop the lion from killing Xi Hao, shooting darts and poking it with sticks. They hoped that they could subdue the animal before it was too late. They hit the lion with several darts, making it drowsy and weak. It slowly released Ji Hao from its grip as he fell to the floor with a thud. Ji Hao was lying on the ground, covered in blood from the lion's savage wounds. He looked at the lion, feeling scared and sad because the animal had become dangerous. He felt betrayed by his once friendly companion. Even though he was still alive, Ji Hao's condition was severe and he needed urgent medical help to survive. His colleagues quickly came to help carrying him out of the area and wrapping him in blankets and bandages. They called for an ambulance, hoping it would come quickly so they could give Ji Hao the medical attention he needed. Thankfully, the ambulance arrived just in time and he was rushed to the hospital. His injuries were severe and he needed several surgeries and treatments. He had lost a lot of blood and tissue and his arms, face, and chest were severely hurt. He stayed in the intensive care unit for weeks, bravely fighting for his life. Over time, Ji Hao made an impressive recovery, but the scars from the terrible attack would never go away. He had permanent disabilities, so he had to use a prosthetic arm. He also needed many surgeries and therapy to heal both physically and emotionally. The emotional pain from the lion's attack stayed with him for the rest of his life. He struggled with the memories of that awful day, constantly reminded of how quickly trust could turn into danger when dealing with wild animals. It was a difficult lesson that would never fade from his mind. Story 2 It was the summer of 1932. In the vast expanse of the Kalahari Transfrontier Park, a place teeming with the raw essence of the untamed wilderness, Richard Turner, a seasoned game hunter, lay prostrate on the arid ground. His keen eyes peered through the scope of his rifle, fixed on a majestic, imposing figure in the distance. It was a formidable lion, the object of his relentless pursuit. Richard had always dreamed of hunting a lion. He was fascinated by the majestic beasts, their strength, speed, and ferocity. He wanted to prove himself as a hunter, to feel the thrill of the chase, the adrenaline of the kill. He wanted to hang a lion's head on his wall, a trophy of his conquest. He traveled from his home in England to Calicotti Transfrontier Park to fulfill this dream. This vast wilderness spanned the borders of South Africa and Botswana. Richard had done his research and knew that this park was renowned for its rich wildlife, including a significant lion population. Eager to make the most of his adventure, he had hired a local guide named Tariq, who claimed to know the best spots for finding lions. Tariq was a tall, lean man with dark skin and a friendly smile. He had been guiding hunters for years and knew the savannas ins and outs. His experience was evident in how he effortlessly read the signs of the land and interpreted the subtle clues left by the wild inhabitants. Tariq's knowledge extended beyond just locating the lions. He understood their behavior and the intricate dynamics of their pride. As the sun rose on their first day of the expedition, Richard and Tariq set out on their quest. The anticipation hung in the air like a charged current. Richard's heart pounded with excitement and a tinge of nervousness. He was eager to prove himself as a hunter and believed in Tariq's expertise. They had been following a huge male lion for days, observing its movements, habits, and territory. They had seen it hunt, mate, and rest. They had learned its patterns and routines. They had waited for the perfect opportunity to strike. It came on the fourth day of their expedition. The lion was resting under a shady acacia tree, its golden fur blending with the dry grass. It was alone, separated from its pride. 
it was vulnerable. Richard and Tariq approached cautiously, keeping a safe distance. They crawled on their bellies, using the cover of the bushes and rocks. They carried rifles with powerful scopes and silencers. They aimed for the lion's heart. Richard felt his pulse quicken as he looked through the scope. He saw the lion's chest rise and fall with each breath. He saw its eyes close, unaware of the danger. He saw its magnificent mane, a symbol of its dominance and power. Richard felt a surge of excitement and fear. He was about to kill a lion. He squeezed the trigger. The echo of the gunshot reverberated through the savanna, reaching the ears of another, more sinister audience. A pride of lions concealed within the shadows had been observing their human intruders with a watchful eye. The unexpected noise signaled through the parched air, and the predator sprang into action. The bullet flew silently and hit the lion near its hind legs. It was a bad shot. Richard had missed the heart. The lion roared in pain and shock. It leaped up from its resting spot and tried to run away. But it was too late. The bullet had severed its spine. It collapsed to the ground, paralyzed. Richard and Tariq cheered. They had done it. They had wounded a lion. They got up from their hiding place and ran toward their jeep. They wanted to finish the lion before it died from blood loss or shock. They wanted to claim their prize. As Richard and Tariq approached the wounded lion, their senses attuned to the task, they remained oblivious to the approaching danger. The soft sand muffled the sound of paws closing in before they could comprehend the imminent peril. The jeep bumped and rattled through the dusty terrain, heading toward the injured lion. Suddenly, Richard and Tariq were caught in an unexpected attack from a pride of lions. The fierce predator sprang out of the bushes, descending upon the jeep from all sides, clawing, biting, and tearing at the vehicle. A swift and agile lioness leaped onto the jeep's hood with a fierce growl. Her powerful assault was directed at the windshield, shattering the glass as she aimed to reach the humans inside. Richard's instincts kicked in, and he swiftly raised his rifle to defend himself. But before he could react, another lion lunged at him from behind, adding to the chaos and danger of the situation. Tariq maneuvered the jeep, desperately attempting to escape the ever-tightening ring of danger. He revved the engine, but the predatory ambush was relentless. Lions emerged from the shadows, converging on the vehicle like an orchestrated symphony of death. In his attempt to counterattack, Richard lost his footing, tumbling out of the jeep and into the sandy terrain. Panic gripped him as he felt the unforgiving earth beneath his palms. The savanna, once his playground, had become a nightmarish stage where the predators held dominion. Lions surged toward the fallen hunter, their primal instincts guiding them. Claws unsheathed and teeth bared, they showed no mercy. Richard's screams filled the air, echoing through the park's vastness, but there was no reprieve. Blood flowed from his wounds, staining the dry grass and attracting more predators. The lions fought over his body, ferociously ripping and tearing at his flesh. His bones cracked and snapped under their powerful jaws, sending shards flying in all directions. His eyes bulged out of their sockets, and his face contorted in agony as he felt every bite and scratch. Heavy with a mix of guilt and survival instinct, Tariq pushed on the gas pedal and drove as far as he could from the scene to escape the feasting lions. As he made the distress call, his trembling voice filled with terror punctuated the urgency of his situation. But before a rescue team could arrive, the gruesome fate of Richard Turner had already been sealed. The lions attacked him with fierce and violent behavior, ripping his flesh from his bones and creating a terrible scene of carnage. Tariq saw how hungry the lions were as they devoured the once proud hunter. When the rescue team arrived, they witnessed a horrifying sight. Richard's insides were spilling out of his belly. His arms and legs were torn apart and lying around him and his head was hardly recognizable amidst all the blood and gore. Tariq desperately wished he could escape the dreadful sight, but fear and shock left him frozen. Sadly, it was all too late. All that remained of Richard Turner 
was his mutilated and lifeless form, a stark and somber reminder of the merciless reality of the wild. Story 3 Lilia Smythe had always dreamed of visiting the Serengeti. This vast and beautiful savanna was home to some of the most incredible wildlife on the planet. She was a passionate photographer who wanted to capture the essence of nature through her lens. She had saved up for years to join a safari tour to take her to the heart of the wilderness, where she hoped to see majestic lions, the graceful gazelles, the towering giraffes, and the colorful birds. She boarded an enclosed jeep with a group of tourists who shared her enthusiasm for adventure. They were accompanied by a guide who knew the area well and warned them of the dangers of getting too close to the animals. He told them to stay inside the vehicle and follow his instructions carefully. He also gave them tips on taking good photos without disturbing the wildlife. Lilia listened attentively, but she also felt a bit frustrated. She wanted to get closer to the animals, feel their presence, and see their expressions. She thought that the Jeep was too restrictive, that it limited her view and her creativity. She wanted to get out, explore, and find her own angles and perspectives. She thought she knew better than the guide and could handle herself in the wild. On the second day of the tour, they came across a pride of lions resting in the shade of a large acacia tree. Lilia was thrilled. She had always admired lions, their strength, beauty, and majesty. She wanted to take a photo to capture their essence and show their power and grace. She grabbed her camera and looked through the viewfinder, but was not satisfied with what she saw. The lions were too far away, too sleepy, too dull. She wanted more action, more drama, more emotion. She looked around and saw that no one was paying attention to her. The other tourists were busy taking their own photos or chatting with each other. The guide was talking on his radio with another jeep that was nearby. Lilia saw an opportunity. She quietly opened the door of the jeep and stepped outside. She felt an adrenaline rush as she walked toward the lions, holding her camera before her face. She thought she was being careful and not making any noise or sudden movements. She thought that she was respecting the lion's space and that she was not invading their territory. She thought that she was safe, that nothing could go wrong. She was wrong. A lion leaped from the bushes in a heartbeat, its powerful muscles propelling it toward the unsuspecting Lilia. The suddenness of the attack left her paralyzed with fear as the ferocious beast lunged at her, claws extended and teeth bared. The lion's attack was brutal and swift, leaving Lilia no chance to react. The lion's razor-sharp claws tore into her flesh, and she felt the searing pain as it mauled her body. The force of the attack knocked her to the ground, and the lion, relentless in its assault, pressed its massive weight onto her chest. The impact crushed her ribs, making it agonizingly challenging to breathe. Desperately, Lilia tried to fend off the lion, but its power was overwhelming. The creature inflicted deep wounds and lacerations all over her face and body. Her arm bore the brunt of the attack, and the lion's powerful jaws clamped down on it mercilessly. The bones snapped under the pressure, and parts of her shattered arm jutted out of the skin. As the horrific attack unfolded before the other tourists inside the jeep, they were left shocked and paralyzed. Witnessing the ferocious lion pounce on Lilia was a sight that etched fear into their hearts. Reacting swiftly to the distressing scene, the safari tour crew didn't waste a moment. They heard Lilia's cries of pain and saw the life-threatening peril she was facing. Understanding the situation's urgency, they grabbed their rifles, knowing they had to act swiftly and resolutely to save her life. The deafening shots echoed through the savanna as the crew did their best to fend off the lion and drive her away from her prey. They understood the delicate balance of coexistence between humans and wildlife, but their priority in that critical moment was Lilia's survival. The tension in the air was palpable as they grappled with the heartbreaking necessity of their actions. The bullets hit their mark and pierced the lion's fur and flesh. 
The lion let out a loud roar of pain and anger as it felt them enter its body. She let go of Lilia's arm, which was now mangled and almost severed from her shoulder. It turned around and faced her attackers, ready to charge at them with all its remaining strength. But before the lion could do that, another shot rang out and hit the predator in the head, killing it instantly. The crew rushed to Lilia's side and lifted her from the ground. They wrapped bandages around her wounds and tried to stop the bleeding. They called for help on the radio and waited for a helicopter to arrive. They hoped Lilia would survive, but they knew her chances were slim. Lilia was barely conscious as they carried her to the jeep. She could barely detect a pulse in her arm or move it. She looked at it and saw that it was a bloody mess with parts of her bones sticking out and her skin was torn and shredded. She knew that she would lose her arm, if not her life. Lilia felt sad and guilty as she looked at the lion's lifeless body beside the bush. The lion looked peaceful, with its eyes closed and mouth open, but there were bloodstains on its fur and bullet holes in its skin, showing its tragic end. Lilia knew she was the reason the lion died. The weight of her actions and the strong sense of respect toward wildlife overwhelmed Lilia, and she closed her eyes, losing consciousness. At that moment, she wasn't sure if she would wake up again or ever see the beautiful Serengeti. She wondered if she could bear taking another photo, knowing the consequences.